Hello, everybody. I am back from break. <sighs> so, want to start here at number one, or is there another request? We can start from there if you want, Ms. Barbara. Okay. All right, describe how the graph of one third times the absolute value of X minus three can be obtained from the basic graph. Then graph the function, which translates of course into, let's try to make it a little bigger, um, um, control plus there, that's somewhat bigger. Um, translates into choosing one of these. OK, um, we start with the graph of H of X equals the absolute value of X and then do something to it vertically. So I'm betting that's the stretch by a factor of. Yes, they always use the factor with stretch. So I'm going to say shrink, actually, it's shrink by a factor of one third, one divided by three. The number in front is always either the vertical stretch or the vertical shrink. If it's a fraction like this, it's the vertical shrink. Now, finally, shift it. Okay, finally shift it down three units. The minus three at the right end is the vertical shift, up or down. If it's a plus, you go up. If it's a minus, you go down. So shift it down three units. And then find the correct graph. Well, we're going down. So this is definitely down. And since this is 10, each one of these hash marks is two. So that would be a three. So we would be going down three and the arms are open much wider. So that would be a vertical shrink because the arms are lower. Um, so I would go with C, but there is no reason that you can't graph this on your graphing calculator. So let's do that just to make sure. Okay, so clear and Y equals Clear that. And we are going to say, per, no, parentheses, one divided by three, parentheses closed, times the absolute values. So you click on the math button, and then you hit the right arrow key so that num is highlighted and abs is right there at the top. So you hit enter. And I type in X. And then the right arrow key to move to the outside. And then minus, not negative, minus three. Okay, and then I graph by clicking on graph. Yeah, there. Now, if I want this graph to look exactly like this graph, I would change the scale, okay? So click on window. And let's see, first go zoom six. Now they use a scale of two. So I'm going to go to window. There you see window. 
This is the scale for the X axis and the scale for the Y axis. If I go down, down, down here, no, nope, back up. I'm going to click two to change that to a two and then do the same thing to the Y scale. Now when I graph this, it will look exactly like graph C. Cool beans. So C definitely is what I would choose, and then I will check my answer. And I got it right. And so there it is. Any discussion or questions about this? So it shrinks when it's a fraction? Yes. Oh, okay. So whenever it's more than one, it uh, stretches? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. More questions, more discussion. And can you explain again, please, Ms. Barbara, how you said if it's a negative, then we would go up, and if it's a positive, we would go down? Did I understand that correctly? No, here, that's, that's if we had the minus three in here. Minus goes right and plus goes left, okay. which is kind of contrary. But out here on the end, um, a minus means you go down and a plus means you go up. Okay. Okay. You have to write that out and remember it. Good. More questions? Okay, let's go to number two. Describe how the graph of the function can be obtained from one of the basic graphs. Five times the square root of X minus six. Okay, start with the graph of H of X equals the square root of X. Then do something to it by a factor of something. The word factor means we're going to deal with the number in front, which is either a stretch or a shrink. But since this number is greater than one, it's going to be a stretch. Stretch it vertically by a factor of five. And then finally shift it down six units. Okay. Oh, and we don't have to look at a, at a graph. How nice. Uh, I have a question. Yes. When do you know when do you, like when you have to stretch it vertically or horizontally? Okay. Um, 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 this would be number two. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about this function right here. The vertical stretch or shrink is found here out front.
the horizontal stretch or shrink is found here. Okay, everything horizontal occurs inside the argument of the function with the X. Everything that has to do with vertical stretching or, or movement up or down occurs on the outside of the function, either here for the vertical stretch or shrink or out here for the vertical shift. Meanwhile, the horizontal stretch or shrink is in here. Not stretch, shift. Okay, and in there, plus means go to the left. And minus means go to the right. But out here, plus means go up. And minus means go down. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good, good, good. More questions. <clears throat> Now we're being asked to solve number three. Notice that the middle term is missing, the power one term. When you have this and you're told to solve a quadratic equation, what you do is you move the constant term over to the other side. Since it's a plus six, I will subtract six from both sides of the equation. That'll be 3x squared plus 0 equals negative 6. And of course, 3x squared plus 0 is just 3x squared equals negative 6. Now, here's a number in front of x squared. I can divide that out. Divide by 3, divide by 3. That will leave me with x squared equals negative 2. 
Now I need to move that minus sign over to the right. There. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That's the basic form of using the square root principle. The square root of x squared is x. And this is going to be plus or minus the square root of negative one times two, which is x equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of two, which will be x equals plus or minus i times the square root of two. Now this says express complex numbers in terms of i Use a comma to separate answers. Okay, well, this might mean then that they don't want the plus or minus. You can tell when you click on the, um, the answer box, if there's a plus or minus, then you can use that, probably. Um, in a lowercase i times the square root of two. Yeah. That's relatively new in the history of my math lab. They've only had it for a few years. Um, up until then, you had to write that as i times the square root of two comma negative i times the square root of two. And they offered you no choices. So this is pretty good. Don't forget your i. Okay, you wanna go through these steps until you become an old hand at doing this. Questions or discussion about this? Okay, we move on to number four. <clears throat> number four, then. All right, the instructions down here, well, the big instructions, the top instructions just say solve. The bottom instructions say simplify your answer, use a comma to separate answers as needed, express complex numbers in terms of I, and type each solution only once. Okay, whatever. So here's our problem. Seven y to the third minus 13y squared minus 2y equals zero. I'm just making it worse. There, okay. Uh, the first thing I see is that there is a common factor of y in every term, 
and that that is the only common factor. So y times 7y squared minus 13y minus 2 equals 0. Now, I think this is factorable by um, uh, grouping or the AC method. Uh, so, you know, it depends on whether you want to use the AC method or whether you want to use the quadratic formula. Um, let's do the AC method. So we're go going to look at kind of come over to the edge here. Seven Y squared minus thirteen Y minus two. So A times C is going to be seven times negative two is going to be negative. 14 and negative 14 factors into 1 times negative 14 and we're looking for negative 13 so 1 plus negative 14 equals negative 13 so right there that's what I want So let's do y times y bracket 7y squared minus 14y plus 1y minus 2. And the reason I want to put brackets is that in the next step, I plan to make my y's smaller. And put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. Now, I use the usual grouping method of factoring out a GCF and factoring out a GCF. So, 7 goes into both of these terms and Y goes into both of these terms. So, 7Y will be my GCF here. And I will have 2Y left here. No, I won't. I lied. I will have one Y left. Minus two. Oh, yeah. Y minus two. That's it. Okay. Plus. There is no GCF in here, which means we'll use the GCF that's always there since two or minus two and two times one give the same answer. Really, there is a GCF of one in both of those terms. So I pull it out and I'm left with Y minus two. Now, notice that y minus 2 becomes the GCF, and don't forget your y on the outside. And then the leftover 7y plus 1.
and I don't need brackets now. So meanwhile, all of this stuff equals zero. So now I'll take each factor and set it equal to zero. Um, I'll add two to both sides here. Negative two plus two is zero, so I'll have y plus zero equals two. And y plus zero is just y, so I will have y equals two. Meanwhile, over here, y equals zero. I mean, it's already solved automatically. Over here, I'm going to have to go to more trouble. Uh, subtract one, subtract one. One minus one is zero, so I'll have seven y plus zero equals negative one. So seven y equals negative one. And then I'll divide by seven and divide by seven. Seven and seven cancel leaving me with y equals negative one seventh. And those are my three solutions to this equation right here. And of course there would have to be three solutions because the highest power is three. Okay. Any questions, any discussion? What if you wanted to use the quadratic formula because you're just not good at the AC method? We can do that. 7y squared minus 14y. <clears throat> ah, up here, minus 13y. This would be before I tried using the AC method. Okay, A is 7. B is negative 13, and C is negative 2. So here we would have Y equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that would be y equals negative, negative 13, plus or minus the square root of negative 13 squared minus four times a, which is seven, times c, which is negative two all over two times seven. And that will be y equals positive 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 minus 4 times 7 is 28, 
negative 28 times negative 2. Aha, that'll be positive 56, I think. But let me come over here and make sure. If I have negative 28 and I multiply by negative 2, get 16, 56, and negative times negative is positive. So yes, so it's plus 56. There you go. Over 14. So we will have y equals 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 plus 56. 6 plus 9 is 15. Carry the 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. Plus 6 is 12. Carry the 1. That's 2. 225 over 13. I mean over 14. So we're going to have to keep moving down. Are we? We could Try this. Y equals 13 plus or minus 15 over 14. So Y equals 13 minus 15 over 14. And y equals 13. Plus 15. Over 14. So we will have negative 2 over 14. which is negative one seventh. And we will have y equals 28 over 14. So y equals two. And what we did was we solved this, we got y equals zero from there, and using the quadratic formula here, we got y equals negative one seventh and y equals two, which is the same exact thing we got. We had two and negative one seventh. So whether you use the quadratic formula or whether you use the AC method, you're going to get the right, I mean, the same answers, which are the right answers. So I should list these here. You're going to have zero, negative one seventh, and two. And that is how you do number four. Do we just want to go on to five or does anyone have a question? Let's go on to five, please. Or if anybody has a question. Whatever the next one is. We're going to do it again. Solve. Simplify your answer, type an exact answer using radicals as needed. Express complex numbers in terms of I. Use a comma to separate your answers. Okay, another nasty one. Number five. 6x squared plus 5 x equals 21. And I pulled 21 back over. Uh, 
So this will get me 6x squared plus 5x minus 21. And I am definitely using the uh, quadratic formula here. Okay, so A is 6, B is 5, C is negative 21, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. You got to sing it to yourself at home. Negative 5. Plus or minus. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared. Minus 4 times 6 times negative 21 over 2 times 5 equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of yucky no Wrong one. Clear. Five squared minus four times six times negative 21. Now again, how to do this. Okay, five squared. I'll make it bigger in just a second. Five squared minus four times six times negative 21. Five squared minus four times six times negative 21 is 529 over 10. Now, let's see if this is a perfect square. It is. All right, that means we could have factored. But I wimped out. So X equals negative five plus or minus 23 with no radical all over 10. And so that will give us negative 5 minus 23 over 10. And x equals negative 5 plus 23 over 10. And so. Ms. Barbara, I have a question. Yeah. Instead yes, yes. of 10, do you think it should be 12 because it's 2 times A? Times 6. It's oh, and it should be 6, six yes. And I put the wrong number in. Thank you for saving me from a fate worse than death. Okay. Well, maybe not worse, but, you know, 12. Absolutely. Woohoo! Might get it right.
OK, now negative 28 over 12. And X equals. 23 minus 5. It's 8. 13 minus 5 is 8, and that becomes a 1. So that should be 18 over 12. So 28 over 12. Let's see, 4 will go into both of these. So if 4 goes into there, we get negative 7 over 3. And over here, 2 goes into both of these, but 6 goes into both of them. X equals three over two. Let's see if that's right. Okay. Negative seven divided by three. Right arrow key, comma. Three over two. Woohoo! This is correct. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Discussion about this. Now, see, I just didn't have enough faith. But you can choose to always use the radical, the um, quadratic formula if you want to. But you see, it's really, really easy to make mistakes. I mean, just little typos. So how do you get three, um, the answer? I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay, negative 28, <clears throat> excuse me. Negative 28 is negative four times seven. And 12 is four times three. So the fours cancel, leaving you with negative seven over three. And over here, 18 equals six times three. And 12 is six times two. The sixes cancel, leaving you with three over two. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else? So we only have those zeros? Yes. We don't have like the, like is zero another zero or not? No, we don't because the highest power of the original equation is two. And that means the most zeros you can have is two. Oh, so if we had like a three on that, we would have a, like a zero, right? Um, there would have had to have been another X in here. Yeah. So that you would have had X to the third plus five X squared plus equals 21 X. And then you would oh, have okay. to factor it out as a GCF. Okay. But if you start with highest power two, um, <clears throat> Yeah, if you start with highest power two, 
uh, you're going to get two answers or one answer. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Good questions. Now's a good time to ask. OK, then we move on. OK, find the zeros of the function. Give exact answers and approximate solutions rounded to three decimal places when possible. X squared plus 5X minus 3 equals 0. Well, you can look at that and see that 3 is not going to factor into any numbers that will give you 5. So now we're forced to use the quadratic formula. So here we go, this is number six. Um, yeah, there we go. Kind of get the red line moved away a little bit. Um, okay, yeah. So, I can't do this yet. X squared plus 5X minus 3 equals 0. And there's an invisible 1 in front of the X squared. We need that because that means A is 1, B is 5, and C is negative 3. that way over there. OK, so. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 AC all over 2A. And so X equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2A equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 4 times 3 is 12. That is negative 4 times negative 3 is 12, positive 12, over 2. So we are going to have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2 times 1, which is 2. So that means that x is going to equal negative 5 minus the square root of 37 over 2 and x is going to equal negative 5 plus the square root of 37 
over 2. And so my exact answers could be written as negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2, or you could write them separately in this way, um, negative 5 minus the square root of 37 over 2, comma, negative 5 plus the square root of 37 over 2. Either way, if, if my math lab, yeah, it does have the plus or minus tool there, so you could write it um, at, with the plus or minus if you wanted to. Let's see what that would look like. I would have to hit the fraction tool. Negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 2. But that could make this more difficult. You do still have to have the separate answers yeah, these. No, no, these. So let me do that. That brings them back. Um, we're going to have to put each of these individually in the calculator. That can be a real pain. Especially with the older version of the calculator. What am I doing? What am I trying to do? I am trying to get the calculator. That's right. OK, clear. Now. So I'm going to type and then expand. Well, I'm going to show you the two step method, which is easier than trying to do it all in one step. Oh, come on, beep. It's not gonna let me. All right, all right, fine. See if I care. Ooh, not bad. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Yes, you are. Negative five minus the square root of 37. Now, if I hit enter here, that means I'll know what that number is on top. Do not round yet. Instead, now you're going to divide by two. If you do it in two steps, you don't have to worry about parentheses. Now, here's my answer, and I'm going to write it real big down here. Before, before we um, round, negative 5.54138126.5. Obviously, this is not my final answer. Okay. Now, going to go back. There's this trick. Second, enter. Nah, it doesn't work. All right. So, we're going to clear that. Yes, we are. Clear. Clear. Okay. Now, negative 5 plus the square root of 37. Enter. Now divide by 2. Enter. 
and that's going to give me point five four one three eight one two six five one. Notice you do have some similarities here. Okay, now. I need to round to three decimal places. The third decimal place is right here. And the third decimal place is right here. To round to the third decimal place, I need to look over at the fourth decimal place and see if that number is less than five or five or greater. This is less than five. So these numbers will just drop off, leaving me with 0. 0.541. Over here, we do the same thing. Here's the third decimal place. To round to the third decimal place, I need to look at the fourth decimal place and ask myself, is this a number five or bigger? No, it's not. So these will just drop off and I'll be left with negative 5.54. One. Let's see if that works. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to put these answers in. Okay, negative, negative 5.541, comma, point, maybe I should put zero point, 5.41, check answer. Whoa, it's right. OK, those are the approximate answers, though, and the reason they're approximate is that at some point you're going to have to round and when you round, you change what's over here on the decimal side a little bit. So your answers will not be exactly equal. Ms. Barbara, do we have to put in the zero when we put the answer? Or can we just put the decimal? The, uh... For me, I don't care if the zero is there. Okay, all right. Thank I you. I just didn't know how judgmental my math lab would be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else has some questions? or discussion. Okay, let's go on. Oh, did I check my answer? Yeah, okay. Aha, now here. We're going to do some U substitution. This is number seven. Okay, X to the fourth power minus 12 X squared plus 27 equals zero. So when you have a quartic like this, you go from the fourth power 
to the second power, because four is two times two, you're gonna use U substitution. So there. U is the X squared, and U squared is X squared, well, X squared squared, which is X to the fourth, so that this can be written as U squared minus 12U plus 27 equals zero. Now it's a quadratic. You can use the different methods you know to solve a quadratic equation. And yeah. Yeah, okay. This is factorable, I think. Let's see. 27 equals 3 times 9, and 3 plus 9 equals positive 12. But because 27 is positive, it will also equal negative 3 times negative 9. And when you add negative 3 plus negative 9, you'll get negative 12. So those are the numbers I want to use. And since there's a 1 here in front of the u squared, because there was a 1 in front of the x to the fourth, um, we can, instead of using the longer version of, of grouping, use the shorter version of grouping. So u, u, minus 3, minus 9. So u minus 3 equals 0, and u minus 9 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. Zero plus three is three. Negative three plus three is zero, so I've got u plus zero equals three. Uh, u plus zero is u, so u equals three. And I come over here, I do the same kind of thing. I add nine to both sides. Zero plus nine is nine. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0. Bring down the u and add them. u plus 0 is u, so u equals 9, at which point you feel like you're done, but you're not, because u really equals x squared. So you'll have x squared equals 3, and x squared equals 9. So you are going to use the square root property, the square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. And you have x squared equals 9. So the square root of x squared, here we had the x, x squared equals 3. And that's how we got here. I wrote them down here. Um, equals plus or minus the square root of 9. The square root of x squared is x. We have plus or minus, the square root of nine is three. And so here are, are, here are our four answers. You'll have X equals
negative the square root of three, comma, positive the square root of three, comma, negative three, comma, positive three. Which is appropriate because you have a quartic, highest power four, there are gonna be four solutions to this problem, or since they talk about four, four zeros of the function, however you wanna view it, there are four zeros. Or four solutions, whichever you prefer. The reason you want to use u substitution is it can get nasty. Nastier than u substitution. So let's see. Um, negative the square root of three, right arrow key, comma, positive the square root of three, right arrow key, comma, uh, negative three, comma, positive three. Yeah. Yay! Pardon me? So there's the work right there. Questions or discussion? Okay. Now, if you want to uh, ask a, a question about a specific problem, it is not too late. So here we go, the diagonal of a TV set, number eight. Here's the TV set. All right, here's the, the height and the length. And it says that the diagonal is 39 inches long. And the length is 21 inches more than the height. So here we go. Clearly that is an A squared minus B squared equals C squared problem. We'll let H equal A and L equal B and 39 equals C. So we will have H squared plus H plus 21 squared equals 39 squared 
and that'll be h squared plus h plus 21 times h plus 21 equals blah, blah, blah. okay clear uh 39 squared is 1521 and 21 squared is 441 because we're going to need that. So h squared plus h squared plus 21h plus 21h plus 441. Okay, so we'll have 2h squared plus 42h plus 441 equals 1521. And so we're going to subtract that from both sides. Minus 21, no, minus 1521. Minus 1521. And that will give us 2h squared plus 42h minus 15, okay, uh, 441, 441 minus 1521. It's negative 1080. equals zero. And now we very clearly have a GCF of two. Two will go into all of these evenly. So we pull two out as a GCF. And then because it's an equation, we can divide out the two. Anytime you make your numbers smaller, you're less likely to make a mistake. So you're going to have h squared plus 21h minus 540 equals zero. Okay, so we need two numbers, Blech. two numbers that equal negative 540 and that add together to equal 21. So I get out my calculator. And I hit clear. And now negative 540. I go to y equals, I hit clear to get rid of anything that's there. Negative 5, 4, 0. Divided by x. Yeah, x. There you go. All right, I don't, I'm not going to graph it. I don't care what it looks like. I am going to hit second graph to get the table of values. And now, 
negative 540. It's negative, right? So I will have a positive and a negative. So what I want, let's see, 30 and 18, 30 and negative 18 would give me negative 12. What is my middle term I'm trying to get? Positive 21. Okay. So. No, wrong way. Here it is. 36 and negative 15. Let's make sure that works. 36 and negative 15. So I'm going to hit second quit. 36 times negative 15. Is negative 540. And 36 plus negative 15 is 21. We got it. Okay, and notice, much to my delight, there's a one in front of h squared, so we can use the short version of grouping. We have, what do we have? We have plus 36 and minus 15. So that gives us H plus 36 times H minus 15. Okay, now. H plus 36 equals zero. Minus 36, minus 36. H plus zero equals negative 36. H equals negative 36. No, you can't have negative measure of distance, of height. H minus 15 equals zero. Add 15, add 15. Zero plus 15 is 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is zero. Bring down the H. H plus zero is H. H equals 15. Yes, I am going with H equals 15. So I'm going to hazard a guess that H equals 15 and then L equals 15 plus 21, and that equals positive 36. So the height is 15, and the length equals 36. <coughs> Let's see if it's right. All right, the height. The height is 15. The length is 36. And it's correct. So let's go back and look at it and ask if you understand what I did. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Well, of course, the video and the notes are available to you in module 10. Module 10. Yes, they are. They will be. They aren't yet. Ms. Yeah. Number 11. Number 11. Okay. Yeah. Let us jump to number 11. By popular request. Okay. <coughs> um, yes, yes, yes. There. Okay, number 11. I have to make that smaller for a minute. Okay, this is one of those uh, analyze the vertex problems. So we have to find the vertex of x squared plus 14x plus 53. f of x equals x squared plus 14x plus 53. So, okay, we are finding, we're not solving this, we're being asked for the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and determine whether there's a max or a min, and find the max or min, and graph the function. Okay, so vertex. Once you find the vertex, you can quickly answer the rest of the questions. The vertex is HK. And H happens to equal negative B over 2A. So that's going to be negative 14 over 2 times 1, which is going to be negative 7. Now, K is what you get when you put negative 7 in there. So you're going to have negative 7 squared plus 14 times negative 7 plus 53. Clear, clear. So we are going to say parentheses, negative seven, parentheses closed, squared plus 14, parentheses, negative seven, parentheses closed, plus 53. Make sure that's right, negative seven, squared plus 14 times negative 7 plus 53, enter, and I get 4. Okay. So K is 4. So I would hazard a guess that the vertex
is negative 7, 4. And the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 7. And now, this is positive. Positive 1 is the coefficient of x squared. It's positive, so this is cupped up. So this, the vertex, is a minimum point. And so the, the, the value is a minimum, a minimum value. So this problem has a min value, a minimum value. And the minimum value is four. And then we have to graph it, but let's see if it will give us an answer first to these questions. The, the vertex is negative 7, 4. So parentheses, negative 7, right arrow key, hello, negative seven, four. I hate it when that happens. Four. All right. The axis of symmetry is, you've got to say X equals X equals negative seven. Does that f of x have a max or a min? It has a minimum value. And the minimum value is four. And I can't check my answer yet. Boo! Okay. Click to enlarge graph. It's not enlarged, but oh well. Okay, click the graph to choose two. Click the graph and choose two. Can we get bigger? <laughs> okay, well, there. And now I'm going to plot the first point, which is negative 7, 4. So that's negative 6, 4, negative 7, 4. Click. Now I forgot to find the other point. Okay. If X is negative 6, what is this? So we'll leave this here and I'm going to just run over to a piece of paper because I forgot, I forgot to find another point. I'm going to plug negative six in for every X. Okay. So I wonder, yeah, there we go. Parentheses, negative six squared plus 14, parentheses, negative six plus 53. So that means I 
Now go to Yeah. No, no. Stupid. <sighs> I think you have to hit clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, negative seven, four. Now negative six, five. There. Ah. Whew. Okay. Always find one other point. Usually it can be the y intercept, but when the inter y intercept is that big, there is nowhere on the graph to graph it. So you, you're forced to find another point. So I'm going to ask you a silly question. Sure. So was it minimum value because the, the function of stars or the vector is negative seven? You're, you're garbled. I don't know what you asked. That was it was a minimum minimum value because um, the vertex was negative seven comma four. Yes, because we start with the negative, right? Um, on the vertex, ver it's located at negative seven and then up okay. four. Okay, gotcha. That's what that point is. That's why it's minimum. Uh-huh, yeah, because it's a cupped up parabola. Okay. So that is the lowest point. So if perhaps if it was on the positive x, would have been maximum or would have been minimum too? Would you say that again? So if the shape was on the positive side, would have been would have been uh, maximum? No, no, it would just be translated over here. Okay. I mean, the fact that this is positive means that you've got a cupped up parabola, means that the vertex is a minimum. Okay, gotcha. Okay, good Thank question. You. Good, good, good. So what would make it a maximum? If you had a negative sign in front. Okay. That would turn it upside down. That would make the vertex the highest point. Got it. Miss Barbara, I don't know if um, you're going to have time for another one, but is there any way we can uh, work number 17? Let's do it. Determine the leading term, the leading coefficient, and the degree of the polynomial, and then clap, oh, that's 16. 17, find the zeros and state their multiplicity. Okay, this is really easy. So, I'm going to take the question and transplant it. Over to the paper. Okay. And this is number 17? Yes. Okay. Oops, so much for straight lines. All right. You've got one, two, three factors. 
All right, set each factor equal to zero. X equals zero. X minus five equals zero. X plus nine equals zero. Okay, this is uh, to the fourth power. This is to the second power. This is to the first power. Okay, so uh, this is already solved. I'm gonna solve this by adding five to both sides. Negative five plus five is zero. Bring down the X, X plus zero equals zero plus five is five. So X equals five. And then come over here, subtract nine from both sides. Nine minus nine is zero. Bring down the X, add them, equals 0 minus 9 is negative 9. X plus 0 is X, so you've got X equals negative 9. Now the power on the factor is all the multiplicity of the 0. So 0 has multiplicity 4. And 5 has multiplicity 2. And negative 9 has multiplicity 1. Find the zeros of the polynomial and state the multiplicity of each. So is there more to do? Let's see, smallest zero. The smallest zero would be negative nine. And it has multiplicity one. Then the middle zero would be zero. And it has multiplicity four. And the largest zero is five. Yeah. Five. And it has multiplicity two. Right. And how you know what smallest and largest is, is Think of the number line and where these zeros are located. Negative nine is the farthest to the left, and then zero, and then five. And so the number farthest to the left is said to be the smallest. And that's always true. Any number to the left of another number is less than or smaller than the number. And so this is the middle number, and then this is the largest number. 